India is a vast country with diverse climatic conditions. The country is home to a wide range of crops and vegetation, thanks to its varied agroclimatic zones. These zones are determined by the combination of various factors such as temperature, rainfall, soil, and topography. Based on the criteria of homogeneity in agro characteristics such as rainfall, temperature, soil, topography, cropping and farming systems and water resources, the country has been divided into 15 agroclimatic regions. 1. Western Himalayan Region. This consists of three distinct subzones of Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh hills. The region consists of skeletal soils of cold region, posolic soils, mountain meadow soils and hilly brown soils. Lands of the region have steep slopes in undulating terrain. Soils are generally silty loam with altitudinal variations. They are and prone to erosion hazards and slides and slips are quite common. Rice, maize, millets, wheat and barley are the main crops. The productivity level of all crops is lower than the All India average. Ginger, saffron, many temperature flowers and vegetables are grown in this region. This zone is having highest area 45.3% under forests. Land use planting based on the concept that land up to 30% slope is suitable for agriculture on terraces, 30-50% to slopes for horticulture and silvi pastoral programs, and above 50% slopes for forestry is a suggested strategy for development of the region. With the full backing of storage and coal storage facilities for transport, marketing and processing, this region will be able to supply fruits and vegetables to rest of the country. 2. Eastern Himalayan Region Sikkim and Darjeeling Hills, Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Nagaland, Manipur, Tripura, Mizoram, Assam and Jalpiguri and Kuchbihar districts of West Bengal fall under this region, having high rainfall and high forest cover. Shifting cultivation, Joom, practiced in nearly one-third of the cultivated area, has caused denudation and degradation of soils, with the resultant heavy runoff, massive soil erosion and floods in the lower reaches and basins. Since this area has a high potential for agriculture including forestry and horticulture, a complete package of supply of inputs like quality seeds, saplings, fertilizer and pesticide coupled with marketing and processing, has to be organized for each subzone. 3. Lower GANGETIC Plains the West Bengal, Lower Gangetic Plains region consists of four sub-regions. This zone accounts for about 12% of the country's rice production. Floods and inundation of fields in Barind and Central Plains often destroy standing crops. Sesamum, jute, mustard, rabi maize and potato are emerging as new crops of this zone. The per capita land availability here is very low 0.095 hectares as this zone has highest density of population 692 per kilometer square. Marine fisheries program are well developed but need to be more organized. Scope for forage production and livestock rearing is very high. 4. Middle GANGETIC Plains this zone consists of 12 districts of eastern Uttar Pradesh and 27 districts of Bihar Plains. Eastern UP has been further subdivided into nine regions based on the heterogeneity in soil, land use, topography and climatic factors. This region has a geographical area of 16 meters. Ha! And a high population of 85 millions.
The rainfall is high and 30% of the gross cropped area is irrigated and the cropping intensity is 142%. There is large area under salt affected lands. Rice is the principal crop but its productivity is low. Zinc deficiency in rice is widespread. There is urgent need to improve the yield through a technological backup along with supply of seeds of high yielding varieties and adoption of improved package of practices by the farmers. It is suggested to put enculturable waste land under silvy pasture and culturable land under agroforestry. Poultry, dairying and inland riverine fishery also should receive priority. 5. Upper GANGETIC Plains This zone consists of 32 districts of Uttar Pradesh divided into three sub-zones of Central, North, West and South. West UP. The zone has 144% cropping intensity. Irrigation is largely through canals and tube wells. A good potential for exploitation of groundwater exists. Growth in agriculture has to come through increasing productivity as net zone area is already exploited. In all the dearer lands development of fruit trees is important. Milk production from cows is very low. Genetic improvement through cross-breeding and increasing the area under fodder crops is important. 6. Trans-GANGETIC Plains This zone consists of Punjab and Haryana, Union territories of Delhi and Chandigarh and Sriganganagar district of Rajasthan. It is delineated into three sub-zones, namely, foothills of Shivalik and the Himalayas, plains and arid zone bordering the Thar Desert. The major characteristics of the area are, highest net zone area, highest irrigated area, least poverty level, high cropping intensity 170% and high groundwater utilization. Rice wheat system is prevalent. There is need to evolve short duration genotypes and also to diversify of the cropping. Food processing industries should be established in areas where farmers have started taking up cultivation of vegetables and fruit crops. I will discuss the remaining parts in the next video. In conclusion, the agroclimatic zones of India are critical to the country's food security and economic growth. By leveraging the unique characteristics of each zone, farmers can increase their yield, while also reducing their risk. The government, policymakers, and agricultural scientists must continue to work together to enhance the agriculture sector's productivity and ensure that the benefits of this growth reach all sections of society. Please subscribe this channel.